Today we're playing four circles and are attempting to get as far as possible while only using the water parts of the map. We will start by placing down a bunch of merchantmen to get some initial cash flow that we will later use to create some more efficient ways of farming. As for our hero, we will be going with Isili mainly for her hex ability during the late game, but her totem giving camo is also a nice bonus that we will make use of during the mid game. Geraldo is most often pretty useless in these water-only challenges, because since you can't place him until you have a carrier, the cash generated from the action figure goes down to nearly nothing. He needs to be placed early to generate any meaningful sums of cash. So the choice here was between Adora and the Sealy. If I wanted Adora, I would of course need a VTSG, which I didn't think was possible at first, but turns out, using a heli, you can just barely make a VTSG with a couple of pixels to spare. But going for this setup would require a village, a support temple, a permabrew, an ultra boost, a lot of towers that would take up space to buff the vengeful temple. So I decided I was going to go for a setup based on paragons and the Sealy with their hex instead. In the beginning, we want to get merchantmen as fast as possible, so we upgrade nothing except the bottom path. As we get to round 28, where the first lead balloons appear, one of our boats will be given two middle path upgrades, and that boat is the one that we will turn into the carrier flagship. But before that, we want to continue upgrading the boats until we have a trade empire and all merchantmen has been turned into favored trade boats. Then, after creating the carrier, we will save up money for just a few rounds so we have enough cash to make the change in farming strategy. We sell the trade empire and one of the favored trade boats, and then we place an ice monkey on top of the carrier and then two more onto the frozen water. We sell the first ice monkey, the carrier, and the favored trades, and now we can just barely fit one farm and one village. We will sacrifice a BRF to the monkey and then build ourselves another one. In the other pool, we will get the trade empire back and replace one of the favorite trades with a new carrier flagship, and then we will redo the same process with the ice towers again to have two of them on the water, and then we place an overclock for the BRF, Isili on the platform, and a middle path druid on the other platform. As we're getting close to afford the tier 5 farm, we sell two of our boats to get it a bit sooner and then just rebuild the boats after, as the extra cash made by the tier 5 farm will more than make up for the missed amount of boat income and the losses from selling and rebuying them. Then I do the same thing to get the ultra boost upgrade a bit sooner, which to be honest I'm not sure if it was worth it or not, but we wanted to sell one of the boats anyway so we can make room for an energizer to make sure that the ultra boost can give its stacks to the farm faster and have a 100% uptime. We also got the tier 5 druid that will generate 1k per round automatically plus the money generated from the ability, and this is how the setup will look for a while as we save up money until the rounds start getting too tough to survive. On rounds with a lot of DDTs, like 106, we will use the Sealy's totem for the extra attack speed, range, and peers, and also the camo detection for any DDTs that might have been missed by the energizer or the ultra boost camo removing attacks. At round 112 we need more firepower. Here is where we will start farming pops for the Ace Paragon. We sell the Trade Empire and the Energizer to make room for it and we use the last bit of space to place a Super Brittle. This will serve as a decamo replacement for the Energizer since we can no longer fit a submarine, but using Isili's totem will still be necessary. Now we want to keep this setup for a while to farm 16.2 million pops for the Ace. Sometimes there will be long rounds in which you might be able to squeeze out an ultra boost on your ace or carrier flagship after the farm has already put out all of the crates for that round and you still have time to get the ultra boost off of cooldown before the round ends. This way you can start putting stacks on your DPS towers without affecting your farming at all, and this way we will have an easier time surviving longer with this setup. I got to 16.2 million pops at round 149, but I decided to push a bit further with this farming setup, so I replaced the druid with a Grand Sabo to be able to push another 10 rounds. Then it was time to get the Ace Paragon. We sell the Opolis, and then we get a favored trade boat for the extra sellback value on the farm, which saves us about 9k. We then sacrifice just enough cash to get a degree 80 Doom ship, which we place in the bottom right corner. Now we get a favorite trades in the other pool and sell our hero, ultra boost and the carrier. And this is because we need this space in order to recreate the farming setup we had in the other pool up to this point. 
The pops lost on the carrier can be regained, and the levels of Vasily will come back quick due to us being on a high round, and we won't need her abilities for a while as the doomship will handle everything on its own for now. In the bottom pool we get the carrier back and we replace the two ice monkeys on the water with one absolute zero on the boat. We get a Sealy and the ultra boost back and also an energizer, a druid and an elite sniper for some extra income. And now we save up money and the pops to get the boat paragon next. The boat paragon is almost always the most important one and we will aim for a degree 80 with this one as well. But after a while I noticed that the carrier was gaining pops very slowly, so I decided to replace the Energizer with a Pirate Lord which at this point gains about 300,000 pops for every fortified ZOMG it hooks in so this should help us out quite a bit. After defending with this setup until round 221 we finally have enough pops. We sell the Opolis to make space for the final tier 5 boat and then we create a degree 80 nav arc next to the doom ship and then we get the energizer back and also a grand sabo to get pops on the ninja. We survive with this setup for a long time because for every paragon we get our farming will suffer more and more due to the lack of space to place towers. Getting pops on the ninja is super fast, just a couple of rounds and we have all the pops we need, but we push further all the way up until round 280. Now we have racked up almost 4 million in cash, and we go ahead and get the ninja paragon also to degree 80. Now we will get some pops for the engineer. We place an XXXL trap up front and aim the trap to the start of the track so gathering pops for this tower will also be quite quick. Here I also decided to turn down the effects a bit. Just 13 rounds later we get the degree 80 master builder just to the left of the nav arc. Saving up pops for the last few paragons, the Glaive Dominus, Magus Perfectus and Apex Plasma Master though, will be a lot slower than the others. The only way to make them go faster is to place a lot of them, which we don't have the space for, or to buff them, which we also cannot do because we need to focus the ultra boost on the farm. We will be farming pops for the boomerang and the wizard for as long as we can, but that won't be nearly long enough to reach max pops. The wizard got to degree 41 and the boomerang got to degree 40. And as for the dart paragon we won't be farming any pops at all. Placing an extra crossbow master and one 042 dart monkey and then maxing out the cast slider will give us a perfect degree 60 dart paragon. And just like that we now have all paragons. The other towers we'll get are the Legend of the Night, the Super Brittle, Energizer, Cripple Moab and the Glue Storm. This left me with just about 3k that I used on the remaining upgrades for the Ice Monkeys that won't do me much anyway, leaving me with just $46 in the bank. As I've always said, BTD6 is way too realistic. Now it's just a matter of handling the abilities as best you can to survive as long as possible. Despite all these paragons we added in the last few rounds, they don't make a huge difference. The nav arc, doomship and the Sealy will still be doing most of the work, so these rounds are already pretty tough. There was a lot of rounds that really was down to the wire and took quite a few attempts to beat. This challenge was played in a normal game rather than in the challenge editor since it only goes up to round 300 and as I suspected we did make it past that point. The scaling past round 300 gets pretty crazy pretty fast and our efforts to push ahead was eventually beat to the ground on round 348. For this round the Legend of the Night's Black Hole ability was on cooldown and without it there was just no beating this tough round. Overall a very enjoyable challenge. Leave the video a like and comment your challenge ideas down below so I can add them to my list. Hope you all enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.